Hello everyone, today I'm going to compare two binoculars from the Nikon Pro Staff series. On the left, the Nikon Pro Staff 7S in 10x42, which is included in the previous model of the Pro Staff series, and the Pro Staff P7 in 8x42, which belongs to the new model. So I'm going to talk about similarities and differences. Both models have a dielectric coating on the prisms. The dielectric coatings, the dielectric coatings, allows the the binocular, binoculars to have a bright image, and the face coating is something which uh, can increase the sharpness of the image. Both models are waterproof and fog fog proof. They have the same IP scope. With this IP scope, we can put pressure on it, and when we release the pressure, the the IP scope gets the initial position, and that's why it works uh, pretty well. I can do the same thing on the P7. They also have the same objective lenses caps, which are not attached to the body. I don't like them because we can lose them quite easily, but they can be an advantage, for example, during windy days. On the Nikon ProStaff 7S, the Nikon ProStaff 7S is uh, very well known for the neutrality of uh, the colors and, and I think that it is the same color rendition on the new model. Today there is a snow so maybe we can see the whiteness of uh, the snow. To show you uh, the neutrality of our colors. The eye relief is uh, too short for my camera, that's why we, we cannot see the whole field of view on the 10 by 42. Here you can see that the snow is still uh, white. So now we can talk about uh, differences. On the new model, there is a water repellent coating.
uh, this coating is supposed to to reduce the water condensation and there is also an aleophobic coating on the lenses which is supposed to repel oil so the main purpose of these coatings is to to maintain the lenses clean I think that the sharpness and contrast are better on the P7 but please be aware that we are comparing two binoculars with different magnification so I don't know if uh, if uh, this difference is the consequence of the effect of the new model or is the consequence of uh, a lesser magnification but I think that we can explain this difference by the position of the the objective lens lenses you see that on the P7 the objective lenses are more resist than on the Prostaf 7S and the consequence of it is that maybe the, there is less incident light which uh, which which goes in a, in the tubes so if we talk about if we continue to talk about uh, image quality i think on the prostaf p7 we have more chromatic aberration than on the prostaf 7s but again this is not the same magnification so i don't know how uh, the chromatic aberrations are on the 10 by 42 of uh, the new model and I don't know how the, cr the cr chromatic aberrations are in uh, the 8 by 42 of the Prostar 7S we can target a, a tree to, to show you the chromatic aberration so if you go on, the, on that tree in the middle there is no visible chromatic aberration so chromatic aberration are visible only in challenging uh, conditions like uh, when uh, we target the top of this tree So now if we grab the 10 by 42 maybe we can see that there is less chromatic aberration I don't know I think that in both models there are barrel distortions but I think that in the P7 in the in the 8x42 there is more barrel distortions distortions barrel distortions is uh, visible when you when something at the field of view uh, is placed at the center. For example, if we take, if we target this tree, uh, this tree will become smaller at the field than if it was placed at the center, at the edge of the field of view. We see that the tree maybe becomes uh, smaller at the edge of the field of view than if it was placed at, uh, the, at the center of the field of view.
So I think that on the 10x42, the barrel distortions are less visible, but for me it's logical because uh, the field of view on the 8x42 is wider. The field of view on the on uh, the 8x42 is uh, 126 meters at uh, 1,000 meters, and uh, the field of view on the 10x42 uh, on the Nikon Prostar 7S is uh, 108 meters at uh, 1,000 meters, but. But the apparent field of view of the Nikon Prostar 7S in 10x42 is, uh, is, is, is better. So if you want a better immersive experience, I think that a 10x42 is a better choice, either in uh, the previous model or either in the new model, you can you can even uh, take a 8 by 30 in the new model to have a better immersive experience. Now, now I think that we can talk about the diopter adjustment ring. So on the previous model, it's a classical uh, ring which which can uh, we that we can turn, and on the new model, there is a free free lock system to get the ring in the free lock in the free free position. You have to turn a little bit the eyepiece. And then we can move up the ring. And in both case, cases, the, the diopter ring is stiff. So if it's not necessary to To go to the lock position, you can, if you want, you can uh, you can keep the ring in a free free position because uh, because uh, the ring is stiff. And what I I like to do is uh, is to wait uh, a, mom a moment. Because sometimes, sometimes I'm not sure if the adjustment uh, is fine. So I like to, to wait a moment just to be sure that the adjustment is fine. And uh, something I like I like uh, to do is to wait for the first crater moon, or a few days before or a few days after the first crater moon, in order to see the craters of the moon very well and um, and then I check the if the adjustment adjustment is fine if I see the, the, if I with both my with both my eyes if I see that uh, the image of the craters is uh, is sharp then uh, it means that the adjust, adjustment is fine and then I can lock the, the ring. But if you don't want to, to, to lock the, the system, uh, it's okay because uh, the eye relief is very long on here, on these binoculars. It's uh, more than 20 millimeters. And with this glass, I'm still able to see the whole field of view even if I go to the first click.
So if you are, if you are glasses uh, wearers, so don't be worried about uh, the free lock system. You can still see the whole, the entire field of view. On the Nikon, on the Nikon Poster 7S in 10 by 42, I am not able to see the entire field of view, even when the eye cups are fully retracted. Maybe I can see 80% of uh, the field of view. So I, for I forgot to explain why uh, I was waiting for the moon. Uh, it's because uh, when you look uh, at something, sometimes there is, there are atmospheric tur turbulences, and uh, the advantage when you you wait for for the moon is that the moon is an object which is usually far, uh, which is a uh, usually far away from atmospheric tur turbulences, and I think that it's a good idea to to adjust. Uh, to adjust your binoculars uh, with the first quarter of with the first quarter moon or a few days before or after the first quarter moon. So now I'm going to talk about the focus wheel. The focus wheel is very smooth on the 8x42 on of the of the new model. And on the, the Prostar 7S, inside by, inside by 42, it's quite stiff. I like both uh, focus wheel because they are not sticky. But I prefer the focus wheel on uh, the Prostar P7. Because, um, because I like to, to follow birds. And uh, I think that for bird, bird watching, it's better to have a focus wheel, which is uh, smooth. But I like both uh, focus wheel. Uh, now, if we talk about uh, the grip, uh, the grip is um, is strong everywhere on the Prostar 7S, but on the Nikon P7. Uh, the grip is, uh, is strong only on strategical areas, like where you place your thumbs and where you place your fingers. So now about the, the handling. The handling is fantastic on the Nikon Prostar 7S in 10 by 42 because when I I place my finger on the focus wheel and the other place on uh, the other fingers on uh, the bridge I feel like the binoculars these binoculars are very well balanced are very well balanced and combined with the slight hello on the grip, I feel like these binoculars will stay forever in my hands. And if I look up to, if I look, for example, at a bird prey in, a, in the sky, if I just place my finger just uh, behind, the three fingers behind the bridge and the finger uh, on the bridge, like this, the, the front of the binocula binoculars will move up naturally, and so it, it reduces uh, arm fatigue. To have the same feeling with the new P7, I have to, to put my fingers uh, behind the focus wheel. It's, uh, it's not a problem because I can still reach the focus wheel. 
but if I want to look, for example, a bird prey, uh, I have to place uh, my finger behind the, the bridge and uh, this finger on the bridge. But you see that in doing this, this finger it's maybe a little bit far away from a bit of it, a little bit far from uh, the focus wheel. So the hand handling is uh, fantastic on the Nikon Polestar 7 S, is uh, and uh, the ha the handling is excellent on the Nikon Polestar P7.